Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Josh and Jason Monday Christian and Conspiracy Podcast Show. I am your host, Josh Monday. If you don't know me, I'm a Christian rapper, devoted husband, father, and army veteran. And I'd like to introduce you to my co-host. He's a Christian, devoted husband, and father. What's up, Jason? Good morning. Uh, it's 5 a.m. and we're trying to end this year with a, with a bang right now. So uh, let's get into this subject. Let's do this. And we have a very special guest for you. Uh, he's been on several different podcasts. I mean, I think so many, so many shows on YouTube. Uh, he's one of the flat earth legends, definitely. And uh, an awesome conspiracy theorist. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Investigator. Awesome investigator. Uh, Mark Sargent. How you doing, brother? I'm doing well. And no, I don't mind being called a conspiracy theorist. I've been called a lot worse. So no, I, no mean. <laughs> I wanted to say investigator because we're, we're all, you know, we're, we get deep in this stuff as well. You know? <laughs> Tell me what it is. I, I'm into all conspiracies anyway. So me too. Yeah, me too. We are definitely, man. We've had we've had 51 episodes now, and we've dug into everything, man. So yeah, it's interesting with this subject, man. It's it's like there's like I think there's different levels to this, you know. So like some, you know, you you could take a an average individual that has never dove into anything, you know, and it's it's sometimes I believe it's harder to hit them with the flat earth deception. Uh, but if you've gone through like the Kennedy assassination, 9-11, like Federal Reserve, Illuminati, Hollow Earth, Operation Paperclip, fake moon landing, NASA deceptions, then you get hit with flat earth. I believe it's a little easier for you to swallow that the flat earth pill, you know, for us, Agreed. me and Jason are biblical flat earthers, you know, so we we kind of uh, we started we, we started our shows off. We did a biblical our, our flat earth from a biblical perspective and uh, we dug deep into it. And um, that's what we do on our show. We take a. Um, uh, conspiracy and try to relate it to the Bible. And I think this one is the most spot on out of any conspiracy that we actually went through, I believe. I agree. So did, did you have, um, this is a conspiracy and Christian show. So did you have any, uh, or first off, can you just, you know, tell our audience, uh, what got you into studying flat earth and, um, you know, exactly how you started this journey? Sure. Uh, like all the things you rattled off there, I was into just about every conspiracy you could think of. I had looked at I, I'm, I'm older and I never got married or had kids. So I had a ton of free time on my hands. And again, being older, I was into the Internet when the Internet was new back in the day. <laughs> and uh, looked into just about every conspiracy. I have an opinion on every conspiracy theory. Some I like, some I don't like, but I, I looked at them all. And then finally, this thing was staring at me. It's like, oh, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. <laughs> uh, because everyone hates it. I mean, it, it just, yeah. just when you're when you're even thinking about it, it's like, oh, it's just awful. So in 2014, uh, I, I started digging into a few videos, thought I could knock this thing out in a weekend. And nine months later, I'm just sitting there pounding my head on the desk going, <laughs> why can't I solve this? Why can't yeah. I, you know, why can't I just prove it's a globe once and for all? And so I made, as you guys know, uh, beginning of 2015, I made a, a series of videos, which was more or less a cry for help <laughs> saying, hey, mm -hmm. internet, you're really smart as a group. Tell me where I went wrong. Tell me how I screwed this thing up. And I, I called it Flat Earth Clues and put it out there. And immediately people started contacting me and not yeah. in a bad way. I would have thought again, some, I was really hoping yeah. that some academic from some university would have called me up and said, okay, here's where you went wrong. You forgot to carry the two and apply <laughs> this and apply that. You can just go back to sleep now and, and shut down your YouTube channel. But instead, <laughs> all these people started contacting me and here we are, six years, it'll be seven years in February mm -hmm. um, you, later, and all this stuff has happened, and it has been an amazing journey to where, you know, I, I, and I wouldn't have changed a thing if I had yeah. to do it over again. I, I would have done it the exact same way. What I love is, I love the fact that you come out and you give your email address and your phone number, like that's, that's, it's, it's like, you're basically saying I'm up for the challenge and I would love anybody to respond to anything I'm saying. And, and you give it, you know, a, you give them a fair game to be able to speak with you. And I think that's awesome. Thank you. I, I, I'd always been, I'd never been a big believer of aliases on the internet. I, again, uh -huh. when, when the internet was new, I mean, back uh -huh. when, let's put it this way, I'll go all the way back to when I had my first AOL account yeah. back in the day, people were starting to create aliases, but it was mostly the trolls. That yeah. they were doing it because, and I was there when the trolls first came out, which was 
they realized it was usually young men and and it was like wait i can say anything i want to anyone on the internet with no repercussions at all <laughs> all i have to do is do a fake name and you could just hear them winding up their knuckles the, the, this yeah. and and that's what that's what happened so with me i went the other route it's like what it's like uh, i got nothing to hide come at me and uh, so i put my my name and my phone number there out there you know part part of it was um just to, to be more social so if people yeah. wanted to find me the, yeah. they could and it was it was great and and it really helped in the end because people say why did you do so many interviews why why is all this happened i go because the media is lazy yeah uh, a lot of people don't know that when media does a re does research on on a topic they will go out they'll say like okay who's done a flat earth interview click 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 and if they can't find whoever they're looking for in the first 10 minutes they move on to somebody else and so what they did was they ran into me who had done a couple interviews and they're like oh yeah he seems fine and they just used me and that and that was it uh which was wow. much to the chagrin of some of the other guys you know like matt boylan and eric dubay and stuff like that it's like look i put my stuff out there matt was if you ever saw the documentary matt was impossible to find eric wow. is still impossible to find you can't track eric down he yeah. and i have never spoken i tried so. i tried to track him down as well and i, I it's it's tough i can't do it either yeah, um, I was I was one of the few people in the documentary. I was one of the few people that had Matt's phone number. So it, it was people think it was an exaggeration. I think, no, people were contacting me to get a hold of Matt producers. I hated that. The, fact the producers were I was it was like high school. It's like, can you ask your your girlfriend if, you know, if you'd like to go with me to the dance? I was that middle person. And when I said no, it's like, nope, doesn't want to talk to you. And they'd be like, do you want to talk about Flat Earth? It's like, oh, OK. Wow. fine That's... and i don't even like being on video most of the time i'm i'm i don't consider myself camera friendly at all um, anyway go ahead you speak, you speak very well when you're uh, when you're doing the conferences i, I watched a lot of well the, thank you the conferences thank that you. you did and they were good um so do you have uh okay as far as us we we went through flatter from biblical perspective we've gone through genesis we've gone through like the firmament we've gone through like um that there's two lights like the moon is a light and then the sun is a light Yep. I know the moon part, uh, you had some pretty, pretty interesting stuff on the moon, like the temperatures change from the, the shade or to the. To the oh, moon. yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was not my idea in the slightest. Uh, I, I was doing Strange World, a podcast that I would started a podcast by request six years ago. And at the end of year one, uh, we were taking calls and somebody called in. They said, oh, yeah, Mark, yeah, check this out, man the moon's cold and, and i'm going <laughs> and we're and again that was like that was his intro to it of going uh-huh <laughs> again that shows you how you know even then the denial was kicking yeah. in it's like yeah. i've been in flat earth for a year and i was still shooting this guy down and i was <laughs> like uh-huh yeah, tell me more you know and, and take another hit from whatever you're smoking <laughs> and uh he um and he goes no and he explained it and what and and afterwards we we had some of our people and then some of our people start calling me privately going dude it's totally true it, it you gotta check this out <laughs> i'm going okay okay so what it is and again science i have never heard a scientist even try to address it because it is so new and so weird yeah which is um it is warmer in the moon shade than in the moonlight and people say, oh, it doesn't make any sense. I go, okay. So when you're in the sunlight, it's, let's say, wherever you are. Uh, let's say it's uh, 80 degrees in the sun and it's 70 degrees in the shade. Why? Because it's always cooler in the shade because the shade, whatever object blocks some of the radiation from the sunlight. Well, in the moonlight, it's the exact opposite. Meaning in, if it's 50 degrees in the moonlight, it's 60 degrees in the moon shade. It's actually warmer. And people come back and say, oh, no, you're talking about residual radiation and the ground soaking up this. And I'm going, no, 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 no. We can do this all day long with point and $20 point and click thermometers. And not only that, I will, I will give myself credit for this. We are also, I was the first one to say, what happens? See, so if you take a magnifying glass to sunlight, you can burn paper. If you take yeah. a magnifying glass to moonlight, what happens? Does it get warmer? Does it get colder? Does it stay neutral? It gets colder. You can wow. magnify moonlight and it actually gets colder. And we've tested out this out with, with copper strips and water and all sorts of different things. And it's just freaking amazing. That's and so incredible. what does that mean? Does that mean that the, the world is flat? No, 
No, not necessarily. Or why would it be? The moon generates a cold laser light, which, by the way, we can duplicate in universities. No, but what it does is it blows away the relationship between the sun and the moon, yes. meaning the, the we all know, it's like, where it's all known, like Game of Thrones, it is known that <laughs> the moon reflects. The only reason it's lit up is because it's reflecting the sunlight. Yes. Well, that's not true. The moon apparently is generating its own light. And if it is, yes. well, then it's it's self-illuminated and it's its own independent object. So it makes it more way more credible if the sun and the moon are exactly the same size and just have different bulbs. So and that's Genesis 1, verses 14 through 19. God talks about... Uh, God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. You know, yeah. he made the stars also. So that's something that it, it goes along with what you're saying, which is which yeah. is very interesting. Yeah. Um, also, uh, I wanted to ask you, I know I know it's it's kind of it's tough to ask people this, but like, do you do you believe like in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth or what, what is your take on, on that? Yeah, 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 yeah. The the Christian community. And look, I was raised born again, evangelical Christian. Okay. Uh, church was not just a Sunday thing, you know, it was youth group, and vacation Bible school, and I went to Camp Malibu in Canada and did all the, the fun stuff you're supposed to do. But when you're younger, it doesn't, you know, you don't have the 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 wisdom that when you, you pick up when you're older. So I fell away from the church when, uh, you know, when I went on my own, took off and yeah. left the island. I honestly didn't think there was even more than one religion when I was growing up. I had no concept. I mean, it's like, what, there's other groups what <laughs> and so and then I went to university and then i got into the tech industry and as you know the tech industry and religion doesn't really you know it's not really a thing there but when i started making the clues the uh, the christian community was coming at me hard with oh. emails because in the first clue didn't delve into religion at all yeah. And they were saying, you're, it's what about God? What about God? What about God? You know, what about the creation? And, and uh, finally, I had to address it because they would not let it go. And yeah. I was like, all right, all right, all right. I'll, I'll make it. I mean, it was, I was already planning on doing one anyway, but yeah. I hadn't really solidified, you know, the, the concept. And so I made a, a clue called They Are Hiding God. Yeah. And where it basically says, look, you know, you want a, a good reason for why this, this thing's being hidden from us. You know, yeah. whatever's behind me is because uh it was built and if it was created it, it was built by a power that's much higher and much older than ourselves which immediately lowers the the ruling authority on the world which are the governments to a different tier yeah and that's the first rule of power well it's not the first rule it's like the third or fourth which is never put never put yourself underneath somebody else deliberately mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, if you want to retain power. And so, uh, yeah, when I was looking to this, that is, that is one of the biggest concepts out there, which is if it was built, if we were living on a flat relatively, I'm not taking people that say, oh, what about hills and valleys? Like, no, no, no I mean, yeah. relatively flat, like the beginning yes. and the end, the edges line up. Yeah. Uh, if it was built and it was enclosed, then it was created by someone. Mm -hmm. and there you go i mean if you want evidence of of god yeah. this and, and that really resonated with a lot of people i mean we've as you know we've had uh flat earth christian conferences yes that i was not even invited to because i wasn't i wasn't strong enough a christian to even be invited to it's like really you're always gonna invite the other guy you're not gonna invite but that's fine it was it was really cool yeah. and i heard at one of these conferences a few years ago um rick hummer was telling me he, he was sitting on this panel and they all said the same thing, uh, which was that they've never seen a tool, uh, a device like flat, never, like, never seen um, a concept bring people back to the church like yeah. flatter. And it yeah. was the same, the same, same with me. Now, granted, I was still wasn't going to church every Sunday. Yeah. Uh, but I was way, I was way more into spirituality and, yes. uh, the, you know, back to my roots yeah. after I got into this. So. For sure. It, it definitely draws you in, you know, um, Jason, did you have any questions for Mark? Did you, Jay? Or well, did you just... Can you hear, can you hear me? Cause I was trying to say yeah. something. I don't know if I was trying to cut in, but, uh, Mark, oh, no, it's all right. Go ahead. And when you, you first came out, um, people were hitting you up. And uh, like 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 in droves, but was was everybody that was in you? Did, did a lot of their ideas were they the same? Did they they start to click to where it was like, okay, so my basis is basically the same as everybody else's basis. So because I've I've read in the dome theory because what's behind you, like yeah. 
Encyclopedia Britannica came out with that way long time ago, like in 1958. Yeah, 1958. And I know I had a set of those when I was growing up. My dad had a set of those. And I remember reading the same thing that was in that that Encyclopedia uh, Britannica, that it's a, a dome and and it's and then I looked at I started looking thinking about it. I'm like, well, if people back way back, 1500s, 1400s, that were that were very more that were a lot more uh, they didn't have the technology, but I don't know if they had the technology or not. Maybe they had different, who knows, but yeah. they thought the earth was flat. Yeah. And and they didn't start and didn't start coming in. The next scientists that roll in, they're like, oh no, it's it's different. It's it started coming more like around when the Greek era and and when, when Galileo came out and, and he's saying the earth is, you know, the, the sun and moon revolves around or uh, revolve we revolve around the, the sun. Right. And, well, now you're making the sun more important than anything else on the planet in the world. Right. You're making humans, instead of being in, uh, the center of the universe, we're now, we're now basically just a number out there and just we're there. There's other planets with other life forms. And, and, and when you start getting into stuff like that, it's like, now we're not special. We're just a number. So you put, you keep planning and plugging into people's brains. They don't really, they don't really value themselves anymore. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, very, very, very true. Um, because that that goes down to the let me answer your first question, which was uh, did people when they were contacting me, did they all kind of had the same idea? No, they did not. Uh back in the beginning, everybody had different different. I mean, in fact, I was even pushing the uh the Orlando Ferguson map from the 1830s initially, which was I mean, yeah, it was still sort of a I actually liked still like his map because it was it was round, but it was squared off at the edges because, you know, that's the engineering side of things, which is which it was built. And like with any studio that's, that's ever built. Uh, however, people contacted me. They said, oh, yeah, you can't lose use the Orlando Ferguson map. I go, why not? They go, well, because it's sort of shaped like a roulette table. It's kind of bulged in the center and it's got I mean, it really does look like a roulette table. They go, you can't say roulette table like a why. And they go, well, because all the numbers on a roulette table add up to six hundred and sixty six. And I go, wow. really? Uh, and and sure enough, that's true. <laughs> it's absolutely uh, true. If you add up all the n- numbers on a roulette table, they add up to 666. It's like, that is so freaky. Um, I knew that. Oh my gosh, I never knew I that. know, I had no idea. But again, the internet, the, the in, individuals <laughs> in the internet don't know a whole lot. But the hive mind of the internet missed nothing. They absolutely yeah. will catch, and, and they will make connections that even, you know, you. I blush sometimes like, wow, I didn't catch, I'm still learning things. But it, what you were mentioning there, uh, the ancient cosmologies, if anyone wants to look it up, all you have to do is go, go on Google and type in ancient cosmologies. Every culture drew the same thing. And why wouldn't they? They all saw the same thing, which was, oh, yeah, the, car, the stars go in this big arc in the sky. And because they go, must go in the biggest arc in the sky, it must be domed. And so everyone drew sort of a big dinner plate with a dome on top. Everybody, including the Greeks early on. Now, later, the Greeks going, oh, no, using our special math, it must be a sphere and and the scientist, because science needed something to, to really latch on to, uh, even up to Carl Sagan, you know, it was like, oh, the sticks and shadows argument, it must prove it's a sphere. It's, a sphere. it's like, yeah, unless the, the, the light in the sky is really, really small and really, really close. Um, but to your further point, what the big thing was, is that it always answered the flat earth, doesn't matter the, the, the different stuff that people came up with. Everyone agreed, and you've heard this before, everyone agreed in the same thing, and it wasn't a globe. And if it wasn't a globe, it answered a huge, huge question, which is why are we are here? It didn't answer it, but it put you a lot closer to the answer, which yeah. was you're not some insignificant speck flying through space on a little bit of water and a little bit of smoke, which makes no sense. You're left over from the Big Bang, and your life is absolutely meaningless. You're an after effect. It's like, eh, whatever, humanity, civilization, you, you mean nothing. Uh, it means you you mean everything because this place was built and built especially for you, yeah. you know, with all the, the, the wonder and splendor and detail of it all. It makes things way more relevant. And uh, and, and I know people say, oh, you're turning the universe into a, a studio apartment. I go, yeah, but it's a really nice studio apartment. Admit <laughs> it. It's a really cool place to be. We're not accidents. It's like, no, it's, you're not an accident. accident. Like, like I was. I was never really even dove into this till we started this show when we got into when Dave Weiss came on and he started like just using simple, you know, science projects, simple ones, not 
not getting dip, thousands of dollars worth of stuff. And he's just and simple math. And he's like, just check it out. This is your you're you're never gonna uh you're you're never gonna hurt yourself by just like opening your mind and trying to see what's going on. And when you and then I was like, man, that sounds very logical. And and the reason why everybody braces against it is like, why do people get so triggered when they talk about flat earth? And you know, even in whatever chat room you may be using, they're like, oh my god, this is so stupid. <laughs> it's because uh, you've been. Cond- it's the only thing we debunk to children. Only thing ever, you know, we don't go to, to first graders and say, oh, yeah, here's why JFK is such a horrible conspiracy. It's like, no, but the, but we go to children. And we say, OK, so the earth, it used to be flat. People used to think it was flat and the kids would be like, ah, but now it's a globe and they hold up this toy globe. And that's it. That's all they have to say at the beginning of first grade. And then they put it in the corner of the classroom and they leave it there until you graduate 12 years later. And it's an amazing, powerful piece of conditioning because it's right below the U.S. flag most of the time. And you get to remember, though, like, you know, you see the U.S. flag for 12 years as people who join the military straight yeah. up because of that. It's like, oh, yeah, flag. That's where I live. I'll, I'll defend <laughs> that. And then right yeah. below it, uh, that's the globe. I'll defend that, too. And again, I get run into people and where, you know, the, the really triggered ones, I go, do you even know why you're angry? Why, why do you realize that, you know, because people say, why don't you get so upset? And when people come at you, I go, because I know what they're feeling. Mm-hmm. I go, I go, Luke, look, I used to be you. I, mm-hmm. I can't, I can't yell at you. That'd be hypocritical. You are, you know, you are the, in the same conditioning boat. It's like telling someone when they reach the age of like 30, that they're adopted. That's what it's like. I mean, yeah. people, you, you try to do it. I mean, they're like, you know, I had a great family life. You're, you're crazy. You're insane. And you keep coming at them and you say, no, man, I'm pretty sure, you know, I got some proof. I got some proof right here. <laughs> and the second they start to believe it, the second they start to believe it, it is like PTSD where it just ripples back through time and they have to revisit every conversation they had. It's like, wait a minute, who are there? those other people? Was there a basket? You know, and then they, they, they just start <laughs> freaking out because, you yeah. know, it's like anything when you realize you've been full. OK, it's one thing to be deceived. Um, it's another thing to be deceived for 20 years or 30 yes. years. Yeah. 30 year old that still believes in Santa, you know? <laughs> well, yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it is. It, it, but, but it's that long-term thing that really sinks in. I'll give you a quick example. Um, uh, detect the, the cliche detective agency, you know, where the wife comes in. I think my husband's cheating on me. I need you to find out. And the, the detective always tries to talk you out of it. When he, if he comes back and says, oh, yeah, he was having an affair, that's one thing. But if he comes back and says, oh, yeah, he's been having an affair for 20 years, that's a whole nother level because no one likes to ever think. It's not like that you were tricked. You were tricked for a very, very long time. And I don't blame people. It's like, look, you were born into this, right? It, was, like- it wasn't just you. It was you and your father and his father going back gener- so far that it's way past your even a known family tree. It's like woven into your DNA almost, you know? It is. It is. Do. And, and they, that's true. It's like you want to get in a fight in a bar, just go in there and talk, tell them that the, the earth is flat. <laughs> well, well, punch we've, you in the I, jaw, dude. <laughs> you're not going to get punched. I'll, I'll say this <laughs> because I've done enough things and I've we've done, I don't know how many hundreds of meetups at this point over the last six years but we uh we've never had an incident where because again it's tough you, you're if you're let's say you're the troll you're not attacking the person right you're 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 mad at the idea and yeah. that's tough to do you know, try try taking swings at the idea it's like oh yeah you may mock the guy it's like you're crazy you know but you're not going to look at this guy like, flat earth i'll kill you you know we don't <laughs> we don't get that so luckily I've no, I've noticed even pastors uh, when they speak about the firmament or if they're going through Genesis, yeah. instead of saying like in the King James Bible, it says firmament, right? I, I notice pastors even say expanse or they say sky or they won't even use the word firmament. And it's crazy. I'm like, I'm like, listen, uh, every single time you refer to the Bible, you, you go through the King James and the, and the King James only sometimes. But when you talk about the firmament, you say expanse. It's almost like they're even brainwashed and, and, or maybe their uh, seminary school tells them something. Maybe, hey, stay away from this subject because you'll lose followers, you know, yep. or whatever, you know. Yep. I don't know what it is, but it's, it's interesting because uh, day one, God created the heavens and the earth. Day two, the oceans and the firmament. Day three, the dry land, plants, and vegetation. And then day four, 
the moon, the sun, and the stars also. Yeah. I thought that's very interesting. You know, I brought this up on on several of the of the uh, flat Earth podcasts that we've done. But you know, what was the Earth rotating around when you know when God created it? Like he would, oh, he yeah. would obviously probably create the sun first and then put the the and he would also probably mention planets there as well. You know, he doesn't mention planets. The the tower. Ta- if you're going all the way back to Genesis, the Tower of Babel story is one of the most powerful yet the tiniest stories that there ever was. And people they don't like to bring that one up either. Generally, we all know we, we all heard of the Tower of Babel, but a lot of people don't get it. It's like you, you don't understand the concept, which was they were building a bridge to heaven. Yeah. And, and you think, oh, it's a metaphor. It's like, no, 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 a literal structure that was going to go to heaven. It's like, well, how is that even possible? I go, because it wasn't that high. Yeah. You know, they, were, they, they, they figured out where the, the ceiling of this place was, and they had the engineering ability to do it. Yeah. And, you know, as far as early civilizations go, they were a lot better and a lot more unified. And that was the point. You know, and I love the story because it, how it panned out was exactly how you know, I would have thought it would have gone. And that is God looking down going, oh, yeah, we can't we can't have this. <laughs> this is not going to end well. <laughs> so, you know what? Languages. Let's divide this thing all up. Scatter you over here, over here. Yeah, get that tower down. This is not yeah. going to this is not going to so play. Why but, would God care if they're building a tower up? You know, it's fun. It's crazy because you, you you listen to also like when Jesus was baptized, uh, they said a voice came from heaven. Right. So yeah. everybody was from up from heaven. Right. And or, or when he passed away, he descended into the earth and then he ascended into the heavens. There you go. Up. It doesn't say that Jesus went to another dimension. He's going up or descending into the earth. I want to ask you a question. Yeah. Do you yeah. feel that hell is in the earth or below us? Do you believe that? I do because it would make things very efficient. Uh, yeah. I don't think we can reach it, you know, as, as, yeah, a, yeah, yeah, as, yeah. A, as a species, obviously, because we've only been able to drill down eight miles, which is really curious. Uh, uh, but yeah, yeah, I do. Uh, why not? I mean, everything, everything in this world, in the, as far as the design goes, is very, very efficient, extremely yeah. efficient. As the more I got into this, the more I respected the design. You know, as as the more I was trying to prove the globe, you know, one of the little things, which was um, uh, adding a three percent salt solution to the oceans so that you can't drink what you're sailing across. And yeah. people is like, what the, why would you do that? I go, because it limits your exploration ability by 90 something percent, because yeah. a lot of a lot of ship, you know, explorations were limited to where is once they uh, were halfway gone with their fresh water, they had to turn around. Because they're like, yeah, we're not gonna, we're not gonna die of thirst out here, and uh, just little, little things like that, which I, I loved. By the way, one, one more thing, which if we're getting on that, one of my other favorite stories was uh, Joshua, yes. when he asked, when he asked God to hold the sun, and the moon, and the su- in the in the sky for an extra day yeah. so he could slay more enemies in his name, and people sell that story short. I was like, no, that's brilliant because if it was a globe, you're talking about a massive pause. He's like, well, God's infinite. He could pause the, the sun and the moon. I go, yeah, but there's a lot of physics he would have to take into account. It's way harder instead of like, I don't know, just hitting pause and the sky stops. Yes. It's way easier to understand. You know, it, the, as far as requests goes, Joshua just asks, oh yeah, fine. Sure. Let me know when you're done. Yeah. Oh, that's story. Not- is accounted in history by the Chinese. There was a long day in their in their history. Yeah. There was a long day in, in uh, uh, the Mayans as well. The Mayans yeah. also had that too. So yeah, if it was a globe, you would have to do so many things to, to make that possible. So well, many, so many things. The pyramids of Giza, like all the pyramids that, that are uh, lined up with like with Orion's belt, like that. The the the, the three. You could not if you're a globe and you're spinning. I don't know how fast in the how fast it would be. You can there's no way you could be able to line that up scientifically. Yeah. No, you to to like a precise couple of millis inches off or whatever. There it's so close. Yeah. You couldn't do that. It, I don't care who even in the science today you probably couldn't line it up that like that. No. These guys did it to and this was back when there's oh these guys are primitive stupid people. Right. Um, they were not stupid. No. And and also, do you remember the when you go to as a kid to go to those uh, those uh, the stars and, the, and that little uh, the the planetariums? Yes, the little it was the dome always. It was always a half like yours. It was always a half dome like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> everything is in fixed positions. 
there's no way spinning like that and and you're, 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 i don't think you oh can- yeah 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 what you're talking about is parallax which is uh when you're driving down the road uh the mailbox go by quickly the telephone poles go by a little slower but the mountains in the distance they go by very very slowly and that that that's a great point which is people again most people don't understand three-dimensional thinking so you throw this at them and they go i don't know what's happening <laughs> Which is, look, if some stars, if you believe mainstream science, some stars are only 10 years light, 10 light years away, and there's others that are 10,000 light years away. And it's like, mm-hmm. well, what does that mean? That means if we're traveling through the galaxy at unbelievable speeds in that direction and that direction, these stars hour. should be going out of out of alignment. They shouldn't stay the same. And it's like the zodiac, you know, the stars that we know, you know, Orion's belts and, and the Big Dipper stuff, they have never changed in our civilization not even a little bit and scientists oh no no they've shifted i go no they haven't i go with the 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 zodiac that people have used in cultures for for millennia have never ever changed and that's look with parallax that shouldn't be possible and again science is only answer their only answer they come back it was like well it's a really big universe and we just can't detect it it's like no that's not true yeah, and they keep expanding it and expanding it even more. Uh, the James Webb Telescope. The, I just uh, I was looking at that the other day. It was, by, it was a telescope that could, they're trying to say that it could see stars like as like stars that are uh, that came out on in December uh, a couple I think uh, on the 29th. Yeah. That uh, I, I, it was just it could see like back in the future or back. Oh in the yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's it's ludicrous. The entire anything, any story <laughs> about the space program or any space program is for one narrative and one narrative only. And that is you are on a globe. It doesn't yeah. matter what the story is. It's like, oh, the, the, there's a weird thing on the top of Saturn. There's a face on Mars. There's a thing on Jupiter. Pluto's <laughs> re- being reclassified. And then every star that they mentioned, it's like, no, it's all because it's like if you're even reading the headline, you're reinforcing the globe. That's all you're doing. Do you, and they and again the, the the stuff they're putting out there because people don't understand engineering at all they believe it it's like oh yeah the chinese have had a rover on mars for three years oh look our rover on i'm sorry chinese have had a rover on mars on the moon for three years yeah. <laughs> the americans rover won't die for whatever reason even though like really because car battery technology hasn't changed why is that thing not dead yeah. uh every probe we've ever put out and even then it's like okay fine show me a single snippet of video footage from any space thing that when you're leaving orbit of earth turns the earth into a globe show me where that happens i go even by accident that should have happened in in space travel it has For never sure. ever happened it's one of the they never the, look back they never like three never ever look back, back. ever yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'll have, Which, we'll go all the way to the um, the elon musk roadster in space yeah. Right, that thing had three beautiful cameras on it, flawless transmission, and it's like, and just shot you know, the globe spinning around. There it is. Oh, yeah, car's perfect, everything's perfect. Oh, it's gonna head off to you know, it's gonna slingshot past the sun, go off to Mars. Oh, we cut transmission. It's like, why, why'd you cut transmission? It's all oh, the battery died. I go, what battery? I go, yeah. what are you talking about? How, how, what? And yeah, no one, yeah, and then every once in a while they say, oh, yeah, the car's halfway to Mars. It's what do you oh, think but, about these uh these uh you know blue orbit or these people that are I mean it, it's terrible oh blue know, horizon and people, virgin galactic and people like that the, you no know, the the blue origin is like the them sending these people these supposedly sending these civilians people to space these, these ninety year old people like what happened to having to be in good shape and like being an astronaut you get to go to space you know? they, they, no one ever like that guy from Virgin Atlantic he's all I'm going to space he never went to space no nobody goes to space. So at a certain point is. Yeah. Oh, this is great. And then it's, he's it's, like doing zero gravity. And it's, it's, like, it's like, lady, come on, man. It's it's absolute propaganda. And it is it, it amazingly effective. Bill Shatner, whoever came up with that one was genius yeah. because oh it gosh. reinforced it because it's like, again, it's like, wow, I've been watching Shatner since the freaking 60s. Yeah. I, he, and he knows everything about space. Again, because he was a captain of a starship. It's like, that was a television show. He absolutely wasn't real. And plus, you would never send. He's ninety, right? He'll yeah. be ninety-one next year. It's like you would never authorize anyone to take that sort of trip ever, ever, ever. He's absolute propaganda, and uh, and Elon Musk is a complete total fraud, and it just drives me insane. But again, because he's this, this is how the world works. If you're a billionaire, the weirder stuff you say, you will generate headlines. 
Yeah. Absolutely. It doesn't matter what he says. He absolutely generates headlines. It's like he you realize he has never done anything ever. I go, even the PayPal stuff, which I used to give him credit for a couple of years ago. But he's like, look, he helped found, you know, found PayPal. That's where he got his money from. That's only very, very fractionable, which is he didn't even write that much code. You know, he, he was just part of the team that got in and that helped create it. That was uh, it's just like Bill Gates got people that get that get famous and, and rich like that. They usually just Bill Gates had went to the top and killed it. Like because I remember his buddy was uh his, his best friend is the one who came up with all this stuff and then oh, Paul Allen yeah and then he died yeah, yeah, yeah. and this yeah, well, same thing with worm, worm comes in and takes over yeah the usually the people that that get that that are the salesmen they're the people that get on camera uh steve wozniak and steve jobs everybody knew that wozniak was the you know was was the guy he was the engineer behind it all uh, steve was just the the front man for it he was the guy that sold it to the public and he really really embraced it and honestly was didn't want anything to do with it he could have been out there he was like nope i want to take my millions and just sit over here and do nothing <laughs> and yeah. the same thing with paul allen it's like i want to buy the a football team <laughs> and and do do his stuff uh again the people there's there's an old saying which is things are rarely what they first appear to be it's like look elon musk did not create tesla he bought it ray Kroc did not buy or did not start mcdonald's he bought it mark cuban didn't start the dallas mavericks he bought it (laughs) it's like but people are you know but if you ask anyone under the age of 30 you know who created tesla they they will jump on that thing so oh elon musk it's like no no, he did not. But yep. well, oh, heck, we're going to go down that road. Bill Nye. You know, there's only three media scientists right out there that they ever put on camera, which is um, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, obviously, first and foremost, uh, mm. uh, Brian Cox from England and Michio Kaku from Japan. And, it's, yeah. it's, and those are the only guys they put on television with the exception of Bill Nye. And I've mm. talked to producers, you know, that, that have used him for different things. I go, why do you keep putting him on television? I go, because he looks credible. And I go, but he's not credible. I go, but he looks credible. And it's like, <laughs> what? And, and it's because, and it was the same reason why he got the show in the first place, which was, you know, he worked for a local television company, a local comedy team. And they, the producer said, yeah, you're tall and angular. Let's put a lab coat on you and a bow tie and have you talk about science. <laughs> Disney saw it. They, they, they said, oh yeah. And he's sweet. He doesn't swear. He doesn't do anything controversial. Let's do a little television show. He did it for like five years and then yeah. they syndicated it. And all these producers grew up with him and all the people mm-hmm. grew up with him. So all they have to do is roll him into any studio and say, okay, you're going to talk about climate change. Oh, you're going to talk about quantum physics. You're going to talk about the Mars Rover and <laughs> people are like, oh yeah, it's Bill Nye. He's absolutely credible. It's like, yeah. Oh <laughs> yeah. Kills me. Crazy, so, but, which is why you see so many clips of him addressing flat earth. And I'm glad that yeah. they ask him. Because yeah. it drives him insane. <laughs> okay, so we have, um, so Jesus is talking here. It's Matthew 24, 29, uh, sorry, Matthew 24, verses 29 and 30, which yeah. uh, as a Christian, we know Jesus, you know, obviously we need to listen to this. He says, immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. So, He's saying that the stars are going to fall from heaven. So yeah. if there's 200 billion stars with planets rotating around them, like they say, and we're right. moving 66,000 miles, 66,600 miles an hour around the sun, spinning at a thousand miles an hour. Do you guys believe that stars are going to be able to fall on the earth? The way that Jesus says it here, there's, it's impossible with what they say, you know? Yeah. Unless, unless the stars are just tiny, tiny little points of light that are part of the structure. Yeah. Uh, there was yeah. another, uh, and I don't know the, the chapter and verse, uh, where the stars, I, I think it was Revelation, where they, they fall from the sky like figs shaken from a tree. Yes, and Revelation. And I remember um, Rob Skiba was big on that. He was like, he's like, yeah. He goes, that, he goes that's impossible f- from a yeah. physics standpoint, unless yeah. the stars are just tiny little, uh, light, relatively tiny little lights that are just hung up there and that the whole structure is collapsing. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, you're, you're, you're spot on. Yeah. So stuff like that, we need to realize as Christians, you know, like dig deep. I mean, I, I mean, if we're going to take the Bible and we're going to feel like it's truth, which we feel like it's truth, we have to take the whole Bible, you know, and, yeah. and, and read it and, uh, you know, and, and see stuff like that. Um, yeah. so well, there's, uh, humans, we're, we're naturally wanting to see what's on the other side. We're naturally wanting to know, go the, go farther, make it better, make it faster. 
why can't we explore more of Antarctica? Why can't we do, why can't a person, you know, with the, with the funding yeah. and just say, Hey, I want to take a crew out there and I want to, and, and I want to sail, you know, I want to sail every part. Cause like you said, like the, you, you might run out of back in the day, you'd run out of water. You couldn't go that far to limit your, your travel. Yeah. And, you, and usually you wouldn't go that far. You would stick to the trade routes and stick to the routes that everyone knew. Yeah. Cause why would you go off on your own? Because you, you, the ocean's very, very, very big. Why would you back then, if you can't chart it, if you're not a very good charter of the stars and that's what they use is because they were always fixed positions. They weren't, they weren't changing. Like you said, it's, 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 it's just crazy for me to just, just, man, I, I, I think I got off my, my subject right there, but it's just. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, and it also speaks by the way to the, to the design uh, of God, which is Antarctica just screams, go away naturally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Again, it's, the design is perfect in that when even if people got out there, right, you, when they first got out there, there's there's no resources to, to go off of. You can't chop down trees and hunt animals and just keep going. It yeah, is just how ice. do I know that? How do I know that th- like beyond that, there, there's something beyond that? Oh, you, sure, sure. Land, extra land. How do I know that? How do I know that the maps from back then aren't real? Oh, no, 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 they, they might be. But the point is, is that the, the design makes there's so much negative reinforcement out there mm-hmm. that anyone that was trying to explore up until the 1950s was like, it's really cold. I want to go back. Yeah. And they did. It was only a matter of time. <laughs> you know, even, you know, they had to take it was finally the United States military. They was like, all right, you're going to go out there and you're going to keep going to keep looking. And they and they were just circling for 30 years, flying around, flying around, flying around. And only then it was like, oh, there it is. <laughs> The maps yeah. were true, but the average yeah. person didn't have that sort of ability. The, the average person doesn't have that sort of time and resources. I mean, oh, right. think of the adjusted dollars that it took to, yeah. to get that far. And it still took yeah. them 30 years. Well, I've seen like, like, you know, like on, a, on like discovery channels or, or uh, like the funding for like Oak Island treasure, stuff like that. Oh uh, yeah. Oak you could find somebody that would be like, you know what? I really want like, a, you know, some rich couple of rich guys that would be like, you know what? Screw it. I want to fund a guy to go do this. And really get into it, and they don't do that. They won't be able to because of the Antarctic Treaty, as, as they want you to go, and that's it. Nope, that's nobody it. will be able to do it because the Antarctic Treaty, and they're gonna obviously. That's what I mean, why not? Why? Why not? I don't get it. Yeah, I don't get it. It's not. It's not like it's uh it, it, It's like if I don't, if, if I don't, if I'm crazy and I want to go out there and risk my life to go climb a, a K2 mountain, they let you do that. But and die, but why can't I go on this vast wilderness of yeah. tundra and go find out what really is going on? Yeah, and they make it so convoluted that you don't even have a chance. I mean, the permits you have to go through and the money you have to spend just to even get out there, and even then you're being watched. Of course, you would. I mean, look, if you were running this place, you would absolutely you, you would track everyone. It's like, uh, you know, and you would make again the GPS system would divert them in a way, you know, very quietly. Because you know, there's there's hardly any references out there as far as landmarks that yeah. they would turn you in a certain way. It's like, oh yeah, I circumnavigated. It's like, no, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but we're gonna let you think you did. Yeah, exactly. because that helps us. <clears throat> yeah, and it's it's interesting because the Bible it, it also says that the earth is fixed, you know. So like first right. chronicles 1630, uh, he has fixed the, the the earth firm, immovable. Psalms 93, 1, the Thou hast fixed the earth immovable and firm. Um, he has fixed the earth firm and immovable in Psalm 96.10. There's several different verses we could go through where he's talking about the earth being fixed. Um, here's what's interesting. When I talk to people and I tell them like, hey, guys, you know, how could we be, you know, rotating or I'm sorry, spinning at a thousand miles an hour and us not feel it. They, they agree with like, hey, a thousand miles an hour. They can kind of they can kind of conceive that. But once you tell them, well, guys. We're also rotating around the sun at 66,600 miles an hour. Some people that are really, really globe earthers are like, uh, I don't know about that one. You know, that even kind of gets them because it's like, think about it, yeah, guys. Yeah. We're moving at 66,600 miles an hour th- six, around six. the That's sun. Weird me too. That's weird. 666 six, six right there. That's yeah. 166,000 miles. And a fathom moving at 66, or 66,600 miles an hour. That's That's like... That's so fast, you know, yeah. like that's more scary than anything. Can you imagine if there was an asteroid, you know, that, that, that they talk about the size of a, a planet oh, yeah, yeah, that we're yeah. going to run into yeah. hey, people, that people, fast? Again, people don't understand that sort of concept of speed. Our best speed, if even if you believe our military, that we can do on anything is about 18,000 miles an hour. And that is screamingly fast. I mean, that is yeah. Mach, uh, what, 
Mach 10, Mach 12, something like that. It's, it's ridiculous. And then the, the part that got me was the, the, the ludicrous speeds and stealing from space balls a bit where they um where the whole uh, solar system is flying sideways at um half a million miles an hour yeah and people's like oh what does that could do anything i go what what that means though is that if you have something that you know is flying loosely like this if you send a probe out sideways it's like dropping a golf ball outside a car window it's yeah. gone you know it's it's like it may stay How with you they... for a bounce or two but that thing's gone and then if you're an astronaut, can you imagine knowing these things like, hey, we're spinning at a thousand miles an hour. We're going 66,600 miles an hour, but it's OK. I'm going to go ahead and go to the moon. No problem. What if right. they fly past the moon and they get, you know, you know, they get thrown out there at 66,600 oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. miles an hour, which, which is also, How by the way, why a mission to Mars, even if you believed in it, could never, ever happen. Is because yeah. you once you reach a certain point, there is no gravity holding on to you. It's called null points. It's like there's there's the there's no there's no gravity latching on to you. So your spacecraft is just take off. I mean, you the solar system would just leave you in the dust. And but not only that, it'd be a one way trip. But they still keep talking about Mars. You know, again, they, know. they play into the fantasy. And because I, I I'll pick on Americans only because I don't know education systems. Yeah. We know so little when we're coming out of school that uh, they, most people will believe just about anything when yeah. it comes to that. We don't know anything about engineering or physics or biology or chemistry or, or any any of this stuff. And so whatever they feed them, that's when it's like, oh, yeah, people on the moon, soft space suits, uh, the shadows are in the wrong direction, no blast crater, no stars. Oh, yeah, that's totally feasible. It's like, well, it was on. Let me let me throw this at you. When I was doing uh, interviews in, in different countries, I would ask them, I go, look, I got I get Americans believe in the moon landing. That's what, you know, rah, rah, wave the flag. We're the greatest. Everyone knows. Yeah. That. <laughs> Why do you guys believe in Europe and, and uh, Africa and Australia? It's like, why do you guys believe that the Americans went to the moon? They all say the exact same thing. It's like, well, it was on television. Yeah. And they tell, you know, the news would never, ever lie to us. It's like. <clears throat> Yeah, the Amer I go, okay, first, the Americans would lie to you about everything all the yes. time. That's one sure. of the things we do. As long as they can keep the power. That's that's the whole thing. Yeah, man. yeah, they will do anything. Uh, to, as I'll give you, a, let me give you a quick story. When I was um, at uh, the, the pyramids in, in Egypt, I remember there's a bunch of school kids. They kept coming up to me. It's like, wow, you know, like fawning over me. This is, I. they didn't know me from Adam, right? It's like, why? Yeah. They, I, I'd ask the tour guy, it's like, what's with the kids, right? Get them off me. <laughs> and they would and they go, oh, you're the first Americans they've seen outside of television. And I go, and I go, so what? And, and they go, well, you know, the television programs, the, the great life in America. And I go, what television are you watching exactly? <laughs> and we do this deliberately. I go in Egypt, for example, the one some of the only television programs they show them are like Dallas, Dynasty, Falcon's Crest, you know, going all the way back to the day. You know, any show that that portrayed <laughs> Americans as these, you know, everyone's got mansions and tons of property and all this. Stuff. It's like, that's what it's like. Yeah. It's like, wow. well, not really. I go, there's some places like that. But 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 that's the image they wanted to portray. And again, the power of media, you sh you throw that out there, which is why there's so many people. People don't get it in America. It's like there's so many people that want to come here. They still yeah. like in other places, especially over in uh, the Middle East, they still call this the new world. Yeah. It's like, really? Because we haven't called that in a <laughs> long time. Yeah, who do they get to direct that? Who do they get to direct the moon landing? The what? Who, who do they get to direct the moon landing? It, like? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, well, I, okay. The moon landing, and by the Google? way, I... I yeah, love he's a world like a world renowned director, right? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, Kubrick, yeah. uh, oh, crud, my, my, I just, I just lost his name for a second. Uh, mm -hmm. director of Dr. Strange Love and Stan uh, I, I, what Stanley Kubrick, Whew, yeah, Stanley Kubrick. Yeah, Stanley Kubrick, yeah, that's Stan, awesome. Stanley yeah. Kubrick. What was great about that is that Stanley Kubrick, again, brilliant director, uh, it's movies that he built yeah. in the what. He makes movies. Yeah, he makes yeah. movies. Exactly. He makes movies. And they built, he built in, if you guys ever, I put this in the clues, uh, which was um, the, somebody did a documentary called Room 237, where he looked yeah. at one of Stanley Kubrick's later movies, uh, The Shining from 1980. Yeah. He did not do a lot of movies. He, yeah. he very, but he built in, he wrote in code into the 1980 movie. His, his experience with the, the whole moon landing and NASA yeah. basically yep. saying that, that, oh yeah, he goes, I, I, I took the bait 
And it was the biggest mistake ever, which was again, and lots of directors do this. When you're a budding director, all you care about is money. I yeah. need money to make my film. And if the government comes to you with a blank check, a literal blank check, it's like, oh yeah, you can make it. You have total creative control. We just want to see what you can fake in space on film. Take five years. Yeah. I mean, directors be like, yeah, I'm doing this. No studio camera in me. And then you come back to the, to the government and say, can I use the footage that my test footage and turn it into a movie? It's like, yeah, sure. Just don't mention us. Yeah. And you know, in, in 2001, a space odyssey is born. If anyone, I know it's an older movie from 1968, a year before the actual moon landing. If you haven't watched it on Blu-ray or on streaming, watch it. It is aged amazingly well. And look at what they could do in 1968 when they were faking space. Look what and it was look, done. Now he regretted all, all of it. The, there's so many references too to like uh, secret society type stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, like yeah, if you look at that movie, there's so many deep things to it. It's not just the uh, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He was movie. he was a genius. He was a board director, is what he was. He yeah. knew he could win awards as many time he wanted. Uh, and then he died, you know, after he made Eyes Wide Shut, you know, yeah. mysteriously. And uh, but again, the 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 footage was that he shot the moon footage. I still think is you could intersplice it with NASA stuff anytime you want. And it would it would age so well. I mean, yeah, yeah he he um, he invented brand new camera stuff, camera things just for that movie. And it was it was gorgeous. There's so. footage of Warner Von Braun, um, Walt Disney and Stanley Kubrick. Uh, Walking through some of the studios, walking in, through um, the studios, and yeah, yeah a lot of with, that. With some like very high upper echelon people right there. You're not just, you're not just. And, and you, Von Braun was like, yeah, I like this. I like the spotlight. I like being like this. And and it's just, and he he knew. I know he. You're given the keys to these secrets. You you you're you're you're. Ex yeah. Stanley was again. It's tough with directors. You know they wanted they they want. There was very few directors they could pick back in the day. You know it's not like like now where there's all they're all over the place. But they had to find someone that was willing to go along with it, and they had to take a risk with Stanley. Uh, and they should have known better because when he made Doctor Strange Love, it was sort of anti-government. You know, <laughs> it, it didn't have you know a big pro-government feel to it. He was he was mocking them on a regular basis, but it, it kind of reminded me of. It could have gone really south. Uh, it could have been like the movie um, Wag the Dog, where Dustin Hoffman was the director, being let in all these government secrets on how you how you can manipulate things and at the end again that's what got dustin hoffman in trouble which was like oh no we've absolutely you know they said you gotta keep your mouth shut about this like are you kidding i could win awards for doing and you know and then they had to get rid of him <laughs> stanley wasn't that stanley was but but again when he made eyes wide shut a little too far and from what i yeah. understand the cut that was released in the theater wasn't even the the secret society cut that he wanted oh. it wasn't the director's cut and we'll probably never ever see it so yeah anyway. of course and they put it right in front of you they do Put it again, denial is a powerful thing people don't want to think about the bad stuff they there's a, a famous quote which i have run into so many times in real life with people and that is people don't want to learn they want to be entertained oh. and if, unfortunately the average mouth breathing troglodyte on the street that is absolutely true it's like it's like what's what what's all with no offense but no, what's on with Dancing with the Stars? You know, people, there's a reason why some of these, you know, very light, fluffy shows are have such a long history. You know, mm -hmm. everything from, you know, the game shows. I mean, people don't realize that Jeopardy, how long Jeopardy's been on, Wheel of Fortune. Yeah. And, um, uh, you know, America's Got Talents and all that, you know, the, the, you know people want to tune out. They sit down and they just don't want to, they don't want to think about the serious stuff. Yeah. And I get it. I absolutely it get it. Away from, I mean, it brings them away from the Bible. There's so much stuff out there that is there to keep people entertained and, and, and separate people from God. I, I yeah. believe, you know, yeah, it's it, uh, absolutely right. It puts, well, it puts them in a tiny little um, uh, mental coma. Yeah. Uh, if you, if you want to see like a, there was a video I saw uh, a couple of years ago now, a couple of years ago, which was uh, called in shadow, uh -huh. which is a, which was an animated portrayal without any dialogue at all set to music about how how the system runs and how most of the people out there are absolutely just plugged in they might as well be in the matrix i mean it's not yeah. the, the little but it might as well be where they're just zoned out and they and if you try to break them out of that they again it's there's a lot of neo references there and i don't i'm not doing saying that because the new movie came out because it's absolutely yeah. horrible but but the the line in it which is we try not to break people out over a certain age 
because yeah. the, their conditioning, they, they will fight back. Yeah. And yeah, we've seen it. For sure. Um, also, I was going to ask you, uh, how old do you think the earth is? You know, like how, or how old do you believe it is? Do you believe the Bible that it's, you know, it's, it's well, a- when you're talking about that, you're talking about two different things. You're talking about one, how old our civilization is versus oh, just three things. How old our civilization is, how many civilizations have been here before us, and how uh, how long, the, the quintessential question, how long is a day in God's time? Yeah. You know, and that, I, I won't be able to answer all of that. I can tell you that the carbon dating system is absolutely wrong. Yeah. Absolutely wrong. There was a thing I put in a speech a couple of years ago. Uh, my favorite example is using the, uh, the coelacanth fish. Uh, C-O-E-L-A-N-T-H, coelacanth, C-A-N-T. Anyway, coelacanth, you'll find it. Anyway, it's, a, it's an old fish uh, that's supposedly been extinct for 70 million years, right? It's fossilized records. It's got a bunch of, it's an ugly fish. It's got a bunch of extra fins on it. And yeah. every scientist in the world would have bet the, the farm that it's been extinct for at least 70 million years. We, we, they always throw those huge numbers out there, 70 million years, 100 million years. And then they found uh, one of these fish in a net off of South Africa in 1940. And then another one out off of Mozambique, another one off of Madagascar. Pretty soon they realize, like, you know, pretty much the whole southern co- coastline of Africa has these <laughs> things all over the place. And no one wa- and, and the scientists were denied it for years and years and years because they're like, well, this completely screws up our, our carbon dating system. Um, mm. Because because, again, we said they were extinct. They had to come up with new terms like living fossil. And oh, I love that one or uh, an evolution, uh, evolutionary state of stasis. And uh-huh. so when I come back and, and then I come back and I go, oh, okay, so there is no Loch Ness Monster, right? And again, sounds like I go, I, they go, no, I, I, I go, you understand what I'm saying? I go, I go, so there is no dinosaur, you know, dinosaur swimming around in, in a freshwater lake up in England. Uh, and they say, no, I go, why? And they go, well, because it's been extinct for at least 100 million years. I go, you mean like that fish over there? that fish yeah. that you were absolutely yeah. put in a certificate you can frame wrong every side yeah. of this world was wrong on you but there but there are no there are no larger things swimming around lakes no yeah. can't be it's like so when again i believe that there are uh old well not just older civilizations but older species that are out there that wow. were probably you know left deliberately for you know as breadcrumbs that we could find yeah and uh, so no the so when it comes to the age of the earth uh, all bets are off because do I, do I believe Bible? Sure. But I, I don't know if we can, it's tough for me to define the exact stuff when it comes yeah. to that. Do I, all I can say is look, our civilization, our civil, all, our civilizational history only goes back on broken 5,000 years, give yeah. or take. Are yeah. there things out there older than that? Oh yeah. Way, way older. And I'm yeah. not just talking about the stuff you see on ancient aliens. You yeah. know, I mean, I mean the, the, the pyramids, are way older than than you think they are. Um, the Bosnian pyramids, uh, Bimini Road, Puma Punku, you know, there's there's remnants of civilizations that are out there. And come on, you know, the mm-hmm. if you believe, if you're a Bible literalist at all, you know, the, the remnants of the Tower of Babel are out there somewhere. How old are those things? Probably yeah. pretty old. Yeah. Anyway. All right. That's a, yeah, just interesting questions there. Um, and then so dinosaurs. Also, I was going to ask about that. That's something I always have to ask. Uh, do I do okay now dinosaurs are a little different because I know and I don't want to rough ruffle any feathers like my friends like David Weiss is like oh, there aren't any dinosaurs. <laughs> it's like says, they're not it, real. <laughs> like, he doesn't oh. believe he, I David doesn't believe in a lot of things and and there's a new term that's kind of floating out there called auto hoaxing and I get it which is if you've been lied to about so many different things how can you trust anything yeah. And, you know, it's like, oh, atomic explosion not real. Dinosaurs aren't <laughs> real. You're probably not real. And, you know, it's like, oh, dude, you're killing me. Simulation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, but, <laughs> but when it comes to do I think there were older life forms that were very, very large? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Uh, now, do I think that they predated us that, they, you know, if you go in mainstream science, it's like, well, there were dinosaurs and then a lot of nothing and then us. It's like no, no. I, I do, but do I think that uh, uh, God was initially you know, like anyone you know, was experimenting with with different type, types of, of life forms, including giant lizards, or and in fact, wouldn't you mean everything was giant? 
So come on, doesn't that make a little sense? Even when we start building stuff, everything we build in the beginning is really, really huge. And then we shrink it down, shrink it down and shrink it down and shrink it down. So what was the early, you know, the early forming of this place mm-hmm. was it's like, okay, basic life forms. Mm-hmm. No, they're not doing much. What, <laughs> what else? We, you know, and when it comes to lizards, we, you know, we see, come on, when we used to make dinosaur movies years ago, we used, we just zoomed in the camera on lizards that we have now. So it's yeah. not that much of a stretch. So when, yeah. when people say, well, there weren't giant lizards, like, come on, we have smaller lizards now. And most people have never seen a Komodo dragon and that'll eat you. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Alligators, they don't, they don't. Alligators will eat you. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, Absolutely. But they, they don't, they, in a space, they won't, they grow and keep growing and keep growing. Oh, yeah, Gal- alligators get ever... huge. But the average person, you know, most people don't live next to alligators. Absolutely. Good point. Excellent point. Yeah. There, are, there are monstrous alligators out there. And so when there was that movie, what was that movie with the giant alligator at the freshwater lake? Uh, there was yeah. a series of them. It was, uh, it was, that wasn't much of a stretch for me. It's like, yeah, yeah. sure. Why not get people a little feed? Most people don't know that, that, that octopus, for example, um, they, uh, they died during uh, conception or birth, depending if you're male or female, but if, if that n- doesn't happen in either way, they just keep growing. Yeah. And I'm oh, sorry, l- l- if you're going to go down that road, um, cryptozoology, anyone that, that talks about, um, uh, I'm a big fan of cryptozoology, which is animals that science hasn't put their stamp on and said that they were real every mm-hmm. weird animal out there was a myth right the giant panda was a myth science laughed at it the mm-hmm. giant anaconda was a myth uh the giant squid by the way which we still have never caught a giant squid we only know mm-hmm. they exist from remnants from the inside of whales right mm-hmm. and the occasional drunk sailor story which is you know, there's oh yeah there's giant giant squid down there they're freaking huge and we can't catch them there's nothing we can do to catch them but again, you know, science is really big on, there's an old saying, well, not an old saying, which, which was, um, you know, science uh, is, is true whether or not you believe in it. That's Neil deGrasse Tyson. Yeah. But I, I modified it and said, no, science is only true until the day that it isn't. I mean, yeah. science puts their stamp on it and then all of a sudden something comes out like the, the ugly fish. And then science has to backtrack. It's like, and then they come back and they say, oh, well, that's science. You know, we, we, we've now classified that. It's like, why? Yeah. Why? Well, because we have to. We're science. So he's like, are you going to apologize for all the people? Nope. <laughs> it's just science now. If it's repeatable and then they can classify it, it's now under the umbrella of science. I hate them. Anyway, go right, ahead. And, um, okay, so we're about an hour right now. So is there any smoking gun to Flat Earth that you'd like to share with our audience before before we, we uh, end, end the... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there's five quick points. Um, so there was... Uh, you probably know the story, but I'll, I'll tell it to you. So there was a, a German television team they came to me and they said, okay, give us five sciencey things we can take to PhDs. And so there was a PhD out of um, astrophysicist out of uh, Georgetown. And, and so we were going to go back and forth. So the five things, right? Here we go. Number one, long distance photography. Obviously, you can see too far. If anyone wants to look it up, long distance HD technology has changed it. The curvature, if it is eight inches per mile squared, you shouldn't be able to see past a certain distance. The only limit is that we uh, uh, the, the is the thickness of the atmosphere. Two, vacuum versus gravity, which is the, the if it's a pure vacuum in space, and there's atmosphere on the ground, what is holding it? It defies the law of thermodynamics, which is thermodynamics says that there the pressure cannot exist in non-pressure <clears throat> without a, a barrier. Uh, third one was uh, the eclipse shadow. The eclipse shadow is too small. If the moon is two thousand miles wide, why is the blackout zone only seventy miles wide? Doesn't that make more sense if the object up there is around 70 miles wide? You know, we, we never see that. You walk by a building and the sun shines on a, your, your shadow does not shrink down to the size of an action figure. Never, ever happens. Never going to happen. Uh, fourth is moon temperature, which we covered, which I loved. Uh, and five is the Van Allen um, trap question, which is the Van Allen radiation belts announced by NASA in the 50s, which is, okay, are they deadly? Yes or no? It's a simple question. It's like, if they're deadly, then how do the Americans make multiple round trips through this thing? Nobody yeah. died. Nobody got radiation poisoning. Nobody even got cancer. There's still four of them walking around today. Everyone yeah. died of natural causes. And you say, well, okay, then they aren't deadly. Well, okay, then go to a wonderful video out there. Everyone's seen it called NASA or Orion Trial by Fire, which yeah. was made by NASA in 2014, where they said, yeah, we can't send up manned um, uh, capsules yet because we haven't solved the radiation problem. 
Yeah. Like, what are you talking about? How do you not <laughs> solve the radiation problem? Because again, radiation can only be stopped by three things. They have to be dense. Lead, gold, which is twice as dense as lead, or a whole bunch of water, which they use in power plants. Yeah. And the, the American space program uses none of that. They use plastic and aluminum and occasionally titanium. That doesn't yeah. stop radiation in the slightest. Anyway, I gave those five questions out there to him, to, to that guy, and he folded like a card table immediately. And he's yeah. like, nope, this is not happening. We are not doing this. We're not going to have any debate at all. And the Germans went home with their television cameras angry. And that was that was basically it. So anyone wants it, you can always email me. I've, I've got those questions. I've sent it out to many, many times to people. I have yet to receive a, a letter addressing it from anyone in academia at all. And I'm going to leave a, uh, a link for there was these scientists that actually were doing some of the experiments that you're, you're speaking of, uh, where these uh, topography uh, scientists were, were trying to, you know, they, they, they basically just put a camera there uh, with the telescope and then they would have a, you know, a ship go like, you know, 50 to 100 miles away. And with the, yeah. with the human eye, you can't see it. It looks like it does disappear. Oh, yeah, and of course. When they when they zoom in with the camera, you're going to be able to see the, the ship just fine. So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it, is, it, it, is the, it is the number one reason of why people get into flat earth. I, yeah. I did not make the, I, the clues said nothing to that. Everyone just ran down to the beach with HD cameras and started shooting everything. Lighthouses, that mountain, those boats. And it's like, holy crap, I can see them. And it's like, Wow, that's really great. I wouldn't have thought of that. Yeah, it's very interesting. So um, can you let the audience know how to get a hold of you? And is there any conferences you're going to be doing? Or is or do they even have any Flat Earth conferences? Uh, okay, yeah. First, if anyone needs to get a hold of me, just call me at my private number. It's uh, 303-494-6631. That's actually my real number. Uh, I usually, though, respond more to emails than anything else. It's msergeant23 at comcast.net. But you know what? Forget all that crap. Uh, just go into YouTube, type, it, type in Flat Earth Mark. You will find me. Uh, books on Amazon. There's a Netflix documentary. There's all sorts of fun stuff. I have a podcast on TFR. And um, uh, when it comes to conferences, <laughs> as you know, the last couple of years, in fact, this episode that I'm doing uh, on Tuesday is going to be called Welcome to Year 3. Mm. uh we're not doing that much because we're it's tough to find venues that be, yeah. that that you know i know we can't talk about it but yeah. uh, it's tough to find venues that will allow you to do certain things and uh, so uh karen mm -hmm. b is doing conferences down in south carolina at least once a year uh okay. sometimes twice and uh you can check out her channel karen b uh the rest i i've done i do regional meetups mm -hmm. if it's in the seattle area i will do it uh i don't know if i'm gonna be flying again anytime soon mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, but again, the community just keeps growing bigger and bigger and bigger. And uh, anyone's getting into this, there's so much content to look at. Uh, we'll hopefully one day we will all meet again soon in, in a big conference. Yeah, definitely. All right, uh, let's Jay. Do you have any more questions for Mark? Oh no, man. This is this is this was cool. I just like I like uh, I just I, I like this the the little projects like little science projects that you do like like just. Just test them out yourself. You, you yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very simple. And NASA makes it completely difficult for you to make to, to, to find out if the calculations would be correct. But if you just do it simple yourself, you can do simple things at home. Like you said, temperature of the moon and, the, and, and in the shade, stuff like that. It's and you when you prove it to yourself, you're like, wow, man, this is uh I, I mean, I'm not a I'm not Neil deGrasse, but I'm just like, hey man, it's, <laughs> I'm not I, you start to think like, man, what else are they lying to me about? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's that's the big thing, which is it once you learn this, not only do you realize that the place was built and it was built for you, but just about every yeah, if you they could lie to you about this, that you can't discount any conspiracy you've ever heard ever. And yeah. I've heard this time and time and time again. It's like, yeah, you're gonna have to revisit everything you put on the shelf again yes, sure. and look at it with a with a fresh set of eyes. 100%. All right, guys, we're gonna end this with prayer. Uh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you so much for connecting us with Mark. Uh, we pray that uh, Mark is safe. Uh, hopefully he can, if he does go on some flights and he goes on his, uh, you know, uh, any of his conferences or uh, we pray for his podcast and his YouTube channel. You guys, uh, please, uh, Lord, you make a, a blind man see, make a seeing man blind. You know, we don't want people to be uh, censored. So please help his YouTube channel to stay up. Lord, uh, thank you so much for everything you do. Thank you for giving us a clear connection. We pray for anybody that's going through any hardships right now. Uh, please take away the chains. Uh, we And thank you so much for everything, Lord. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. 
All right. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Mark. We really appreciate you. Yeah. And uh, thanks for coming on our show. And if you could please post this on your your YouTube, if, if you don't mind, you know, yeah, and yeah, yeah, post yeah. it on ours and we'll, and we'll, uh, we'll keep the, the ball rolling. Thank you, Mark. We appreciate you. Thanks guys. God bless you.